Hey, what's up? It's marketalchemist.camp where we learn elixir by building things. Today, we're going to continue the Phoenix JSON API series. We started not too long ago. So at this point, it doesn't have much in it. All we've got are a couple of routes under an API scope. We have API slash role, which will get a single role. It's a little bit weird for an index. But basically, you can see I'm refreshing this and it's just getting die rolls between one and six. And there's also a route to get multiple rolls like this. So we roll four dice and we get uh, four results. What we're going to do today is we're going to do something more complicated. These rolls aren't even backed by a schema. It's just randomly generated numbers that the server is returning. What we're going to do today is set up a new schema for quotes will return famous quotes that people have said. So let's stop the server. So we're going to use the Mix Phoenix generators. So you're probably already familiar with Mix Phoenix gen context. This will get you your, uh, your database migration and your Ecto schema that's associated with it, and then put it inside a, a context module where you can organize your schemas. Um, what we're going to do Today will also get us controllers and views for a fully uh, RESTful resource using JSON. Uh, the, the traditional web RESTful resource where everything's through HTML, it's Mix Phoenix Gen HTML. This one's the same thing, just JSON. This is going to be for returning famous quotes. So our context name will, actually it's not going to be quote because in Elixir, quote do is how you start writing a macro. So we'll call this quotation and the, actually, let's see, the, con the context will just be content. Maybe we'll have blog posts, we'll have quotations, we'll have various things. Um, then quotation will be the name of the schema. Quotations, plural, will be the database table name. And each quotation is gonna have an author that's going to be a string and it's going to have uh, just the text. So that'll be, uh, we'll call it content. Yeah, text is fine. Text and text is actually going to be text, which is just like a string, except it can exceed 256 characters. So run this and we should see a bunch of stuff generated. Let's maximize that terminal here. So we can see we got a quotation controller, quotation view. We got some tests, we got the change set, uh, change set view and fallback. This is, these are, are not super related to what we're going to work on now. This is kind of boilerplate. Um, okay. Let's first start by doing what this says to adding the new route in our router, and then we'll go through some of those new files. So, in our router, we're going to put this new route in here. So resources, quotations, and it says to run mix ecto.migrate. Let's do that now before we forget, ecto.migrate. This will run the database migrations that were generated for us in this file. So we're gonna create a new table called quotations, add an author, string, text, text, and timestamps which we just created at, updated at. Pretty, pretty standard stuff, so we'll run that. And now, uh, we actually already have all the machinery in place and working. So we can go to, or we can run our app again. And now, we should be able to go to quotations. And if I spelled it correctly, we'll see there are none, which is great. And it's just a simple JSON response. All right, now let's look at our new files. So we have uh, we have a new quotation schema. This is the Ecto schema. It looks very much like the migration. Uh, we have author and text, and they're both required. We have a content context, and this has uh, just utility functions to work with our quotations, to get one, to create one, to list them all, to update and delete. Uh, this will return a change set for it. And then in a controller, we have this fallback that I mentioned. 
Um, this is essentially boilerplate, but it gives us 404s and it will also give us an error JSON view. All right, let's have a look at the controller. In fact, let's make this a little bit larger. So go through this fairly quickly, since I think the structure of this controller should be familiar to you, since it's so close to the HTML ones you, you create with the uh, uh, mix Phoenix Gen HTML. But uh, basically our create will try to create a quotation using the parameters we got. So there, there's gonna be uh, some some key in the JSON that gets sent in called quotation, and it's going to have parameters in it. Uh, as long as those parameters match what's required, so this create quotation will use the quotation schema we've got here. This change set requires author and text. So as long as we've got everything we need, it should successfully create a new quotation and then insert that into the database and then return OK and that newly created quotation. And then we pass that in on the connection and render show JSON with that quotation. And just to show the entire trip, show.json, uh, we have, actually it's gonna be in the quotation view because there's no separate template. So the show JSON, we're using render one, just like we did in the first episode. And we have render many for index, just like we did two episodes ago. So it's really creating the same kind of boilerplate that we built on our own. Um, except that uh, we didn't have to do it. And this is all really uniform. So if someone else takes uh, takes over our app, then they'll know where to find things and find a familiar structure. And update works roughly like create did, uh, except that we're doing an update instead of a create. But again, this is, you know, repo.update. So it's it's basically the same high level structure on on all of these. And let's take a look at the routes, just so we can see what that looks like. Mix Phoenix routes. And we'll stretch this up a little bit. So you can see we have a get quotations to get them all, get quotations and an ID to get a single one of them, then post quotations to make a new one, patch or put on quotation, quotation slash ID to update one and then delete by doing a, a delete request of the ID. So now that we have all this set up, it, we can actually create quotations and um, just send, but just by sending JSON at our web app that's running right now. And we could use a tool like uh, Postman was pretty popular for that for a long time. Insomnia is one. I like to use one that's built into VS Code. So just go to my extensions I've already installed here. There's one by uh, Hua Chao Mao that it's just called REST Client. I highly recommend this. It's it's super convenient. You basically just post, let me, uh, you basically just make a .htp file and VS Code will recognize it after you've installed this plugin. And you know what? We're just gonna grab this one as a starting spot and I'll show you how it works. So I've already got it installed and enabled. You'll need it if you wanna follow along exactly how I am, but you can use whatever API client you like. Uh, let's close this and I'll make a new file and I'm gonna call this uh, workpad.htp. And I'll save that in, not in migrations, I'm gonna save that in ooh, just at the top level of the app. And did we do that? No, we didn't. We got it in migrations. All right, let's 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 drag this out of there to the top level. Okay. All right, we'll just paste that in, and let's see. Our endpoint is just normal HTTP, and it's local host four thousand quotations content type application JSON. Okay, so what goes in the quotation? Uh, first of all, it's got to have a quotation key at the top level. And once we have that, we're going to need an author 
and we're going to need text. And the author for this one is going to be Bruce Lee. The more we care about things, the less we care about ourselves. And that looks like a good quote. Now, saving that, and let's open up the server console so you can see what's happening. And in order to use this, uh, this great VS Code plugin, all I have to do, since this is named .http, it recognizes that this is a request. I just command click it and it sends. Not found. Let's see what happened. There was no post quotations. And there was no post quotations. Well, let's see here. Oh, it should have been post API quotations. So let's fix that slash API quotations. And we'll try that again. All right. So we created a new quotation. Let's look at our web browser and refresh that. And now we have a quotation. Isn't that excellent? And we should be able to look at this individual quotation by going to one. All right. I just hit a minor error, so I'm going to paste in the next quotation. I commented out the first one because I don't want to rerun the same quotation that we already created. So this one is from Dennis Ritchie. The only way to learn a new programming language is by writing programs in it. Send that and we've got it updated. One more, Emily Dickinson, unable are the love to die for love is immortality. And we'll try posting that should be no problem since this is very straightforward stuff. And what do we have? We have our three quotes. Now let's try updating one of them. Maybe, um, maybe it wasn't actually Bruce Lee that said, the more we care about things, the less we care about ourselves. Maybe that was actually Gandalf. I think maybe that was Gandalf. So we're going to update the author to Gandalf. We don't have to provide all the fields because we're updating uh, something that's already in the database. So we'll be getting that. And the endpoint is going to be slash one since this is ID number one. So we'll patch API slash quotation slash one, updating the quotation or updating the author to Gandalf. And let's try running that. We're sending that I should say. And looks like we have now updated it. Oh, this is a little bit strange though. Now we're seeing uh, ID two before I, or ID two and three before we see ID one. Uh, that's because the ordering must be by updated at. So let's make that one last change and then we'll call it a day on this generator. So we'll go to our context, which is content.ex. So in list all quotations, we have repo.all quotation. Well, we can change this to uh, quotation and pass that into repo.all. This does the exact same thing it did before. Right now it's just a pipeline. And now we're going to give it uh, just order by, uh, let's see, order by ascending ID. So we're going to order the quotation by ascending ID and then pass that to repo.all. Let's see if that works as expected. Yeah, there we go. Now it's in order. Uh, our first quote that was by Gandalf, then Dennis Ritchie, and then Emily Dickinson. Looks pretty good. Well, I guess the one thing we haven't done yet is delete anything. Let's delete the one that was misattributed to Gandalf. So. Let's just change this to delete. And send the request. No content, we've got a 204. 
Okay, that's all it took to set up the full set of CRUD actions on a database back JSON API endpoint in Phoenix. Really, it was just that one generator set up everything for us and it gave us the code in a very normal setup where we could uh, uh, we could tweak it to our will. I guess it's generator, then adding the route as the generator tells you to, and then migrating your database. And that's it. Hope you found this useful and I will see you next time.